optimistic about the future because I've, I've seen the great qualities of the human spirit evidenced in the, the lives of American people. You can choose to turn back the clock, or in this election, you can stand up for that basic principle enshrined in our found founding documents that we're all created equal. Those two guys are so tired. <laughs> well, the table of five has now become the gang of six. So we're now joined by Darren Rigger, Democratic strategist, partner at Dynamic SRG. Darren, welcome. And I'm going to put you on the hot seat here since you came uh -oh. late. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> right. the, uh, yes, exactly. Um, make, you're a Democratic strategist. You raise money for the party. But what worries you most about Mitt Romney? What gives him the best chance that maybe the public really hasn't consumed uh, in 12 days? The best chance for Mitt Romney. Yeah, what, what gives the Democrats the most amount of worry about the guy? How much money he's going to be able to spend in the next 12 days? That people, that some of his supporters are under poll? That, that his more family committed? Is, has invested in voting oh, machines? Oh, would you stop? Would you Come on. <laughs> no, it, it, would be, it would be the money. It yeah. would be the money and the super PACs and uh, the, the fact that they can come in, say anything they want. They're taking money from anyone, unlimited corporate, perhaps foreign money. We haven't seen it unleashed well, yet. Both states. ways, though. Democrats got super It does, too. but they, they have more. They have more money. Yeah. And, but then again, traditionally, Republicans have always spent more than Democrats in elections. Now, we've looked at certain numbers historically, Andrew, that if the incumbent doesn't hit 50 percent here at this point in the game, it's usually not good. But also, enthusiasm. Um, Supporters of Romney right now are more enthusiastic are. than for Obama. And we all took as a narrative a month or two ago, certainly after the conventions, it was the opposite. Um, doesn't that usually tell us who's ever got the more enthusiastic base is going to do better on election day? Well, it means that the more enthusiastic base is likely to get more of their base out there. So there's still an opportunity for the Obama campaign to, to generate more enthusiasm as best it possibly can. There are also plenty of things like the Murdoch comment that we're going to get to later that could depress enthusiasm on the Republican side. And then, of course, we, we talked about the ground game earlier. You've got to get those enthusiastic or on-the-fence enthusiastic voters actually out to the polls to cast their ballots. You know, I saw a story in Nevada today, and I'm wondering if this playing out nationally for Republicans, Congressman. That is, we saw this happen uh, before where Republicans, where you have the, the new Tea Party types, and they don't like being pushed in any which way. They want to think the way they want to think. Uh, they don't like any party, even, the, even though they're closely aligned with Republicans, telling them to get behind anybody. And we've seen in Nevada a break here, and even some of the Ron Paul folks saying, hey, we'll go to a third party if we have to or whatever else. We're not going to get behind. We're not going to go along to get along. Is there that undercurrent? that there still is a fractionalized party, and that might show up on Election Day. Well, I, I think the, the whole issue about a third party is uh, it's too late. You're not going to get any of that. Even uh, this guy Johnson, you don't think? No, you know. no, it's too late. You're not going to get that. When you look at Todd, the Todd Aiken issue, you look at the Murdoch issue, you know, this is a single Republican candidate in a single state. They don't represent the whole party. They don't represent Connecticut Republicans, for example. Uh, and they don't represent Mitt Romney because Mitt Romney has distanced himself from that. So I think that, that people are not going to to take a single issue uh, involving a single candidate issue in for a single a state. My point is, Republicans, I think, certainly since we saw the Tea Party revolution, um, we have seen a fractionalized party, but certainly they move towards uh, the Tea Party elements. And that freshman <clears throat> class dictated in a large way Washington for the better part of the, certainly the last two years, I can even argue before that. My point is, is there still an undercurrent that they don't really believe Mitt Romney's one of them. But and that they're not going to go rally. They like him a heck of a lot more than Obama, but not enough to go vote here because they don't really still believe that he gets what who they are. No, I, I don't think that's the case any more than there are Democrats who feel that Obama hasn't delivered on his promises. He has not closed Gitmo. He has not uh, finished off uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. He's made moves in that direction. Uh, and besides, Will Rogers uh, made it very clear he belongs to no organized uh, party. He's a Democrat. Well, you could say the same about the Republicans these days. I don't belong to an organized party. I'm a Republican. We got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Keep, keep but we are enthusiastic about our candidate. Republicans six months ago had to get to know Mitt Romney. They know him a lot keep, better keep now. Keep in mind the main organizing principle among Republicans that we've seen all year is distrust or dislike or hatred of President Obama. So that whatever suspicions they might have of Mitt Romney, you know, pales in comparison to the tidal wave but of hatred for President Obama. 
Okay. And it, but that's but see that's the problem for mm. Obama. Before within the party they hated each other and they certainly hated Mitt Romney. Look at his convention. Mm. I mean it looked like anybody else would have did better as the nominee. But the the mistake that President Obama made is he gave all of them hope. They see winning is within striking distance. Within 12 days, they can take the White House. Have you ever seen 90 guy? minutes, Donna, of that first debate change an election so much? It's amazing, isn't it? It's that one night. But I think we went full circle with the final debate. I think ah. the first debate, I think the first debate, Romney looked more presidential than the president. And I think by the third debate, I think uh, Obama reclaimed well, his but do you honestly Do you honestly think the race would not have tightened up had it not been for that no, first debate? I, I mean, no. so. natural events, would I think, would have gotten it to about where it was More or where it is right now. as much as the Obama folks have convinced themselves of anything, even they don't think they'd be where they are now if after the first That's debate. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced what, of that. What you know from the donor side, Republican yeah. donors were ready to take some of their oh, money, no. this I is know. real, and put it in House and Senate races and pull it out of it because they thought it was throwing good money after bad. It all changed that first night here. And as much as the president deserves blame, Mitt Romney deserves credit here because nobody saw that kind of performance coming. Well, with the, with the enthusiasm that people are talking about, whether it's the Republicans that are fired up to vote, the Democrats are fired up to vote, the, the, the group that we've noticed are extremely enthusiastic are Hispanic voters. They're organizing across the country in a lot of these swing states. Has it been states. reflected in early and voting or not? Yeah, we're seeing it in, uh, uh, in uh, Nevada. That's what's that's what's turning the tide. Isn't that in more Nevada. labor though than No, it's well it's it's labor, but they've organized the majority of the people in those unions are Hispanic. Okay. Well the that's one big vote. part of the electorate here that I agree with Donna that will decide, I think, one way or the other this election. Um, we're gonna talk about after the break here. Um, we're talking about the the female vote here. Romney may have a real headache. I know the Congress doesn't think so because of who he's endorsing and not refusing to drop the endorsement up. We're talking about a debate that had nothing to do with Mitt Romney that took place in Indiana but reminded people of what happened in Missouri and once again put social issues, namely abortion, back on the agenda here, if you will. We're going to get into that after this. Stay with us.